Ninja. No lie, I want you. No lie, I wanna be with you. I got a task to. I wanna fly with you, baby. Can you be mine? Sex and free wine. Hit and then rewind. Cause no lie, I want you. Fly to the moon. Catch all these checks. Wind up a jet. We jump in the broom. Make love on the Mars. My kind of flex. Cause no lie, I want you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I want you. No, no, I wanna be with you. I give you my heart if I have to. Please do not get with that tycoon. I'm hoping you give it away. That you feel the same as me. Money, your lingo, you say. You do not speak poverty. Can you be mine tonight? Smoke some beef. I wanna fly with you, baby. Can you be mine? Sex and free wine. Hit and then rewind. Cause no lie, I want you. Fly to the moon. Catch all these checks. Wind up a jet. We jump in the broom. Make love on the Mars. My kind of flex. Cause no lie, I want you. Away, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy, Mr. Fantastic, and I'm introducing the one and only Underground with the Unbound. Let's get it. When I die, when I die, let my soul find peace at ease before time could crash as it pleases. Let my bones dust as wind and soils. I would die a frustrated man if I die heartbroken. For I am the spoken word between your speech buds. I am the phonological phonetics connecting the pieces from days of the past. I am the semantics, the literature demanded, the picture. I would die a joyous man if I die with art books and words surrounded for i desire reading my own pieces at death like i would have done at birth so celebrate my death as was my birth and i will continue to walk with the dead my ancestors my descendants when i die i will die a happy man i will die a happy man so when i die let my soul find peace at ease before time could crash as it pleases because i will die a happy man what the gig economy had is still limitations why because let me share with you If you work on Fiverr and you do a job for five dollars, you're gonna get three dollars, right? If you do it, if you do an Airbnb, you're going to get a percentage. I belong to the passion economy. What is the passion economy? The passion economy is the new economy that you see rise before you. The fact that I could teach you with no middleman right here off of my skill set, off of my expertise, off of what it is that I studied all of these years that I know, I could go on a website like teachable.com. I could go on a website like skills.com. I could go on a website. I could build my own teaching platform. So I could be passionate and become a millionaire. You, There's women that are passionate about their beautiful bodies and they have only fan pages, right? And they're showing the world how passionate that they can be with their bodies. There's men and women that are passionate about painting, right? And they have only fans for their painting. They have Patreons. They have Etsy's. We could go down the line. We could go down the line. But this is a real thing, family. Right? This is a real thing. All right? Right? 
This is a real thing with the passion economy. Okay? Shopify. Havenly. You know? This is an actual thing, my, my, my friends. Right? Hi, my name is Kwame Nonike Zorbet. Um, I'm a full-time student at Buan studying BSc in Swedamata Engineering. Yep. Um, I partly do poetry, which is descriptive. Um, and a little bit of writing, I believe. So, uh, I've been writing since I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same applies to reciting. Yeah. Um, with me, how I, I define this book to poetry is uh, defining what I feel deeply about my emotions and making sure that uh, any person out there can understand it. I'm not much of a metaphoric person, so I want people to listen to what I'm saying and understand it right there and be able to relate to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't turn it into business yet. Um, what actually I've been doing, I have been working with NGOs. Yeah, we have uh, an, an NGO called Aweyo for Women and Youth Empowerment and joining Youth Empowerment Committee as well. What we do, we try to empower young girls out there and young boys, mostly orphans and uh, disadvantaged kids because uh, I myself growing up, I was one of those kids who got uh, disadvantaged to listen both their parents at a very young age. So um, my, poem, my poems are based on, on that. Hence, I really don't want to make profit out of it. And if I do make profit of it, when I attend events or sessions, I normally just uh, donate it to the orphanages. My name is Elisa Motabo. I am a digital artist who is looking to be an animator. And I'm 25 years old. I've been doing digital art for, I think, two years now. Uh, for me, I was doing digital art as my own hobby. I was just doing it as, I, I can draw, I'm going to put this out, people are going to like it if they like it, cool, cool. Then at some point in time, I got offers, international offers to do certain work, and then they gave me fees, and I was like, oh, I could actually make money from it. That's when I started taking it serious. So right now, yeah, I think that's the time when I decided I want to try doing the internet stuff. Okay, my name is Hau um 28 years. We are 28. Okay, I'm 28 years at school at the University of Botswana doing Bachelor of Arts in Media Studies. I like to say I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a film person basically, so I love writing. That's one of the things that I'm really passionate about. Uh, quite honestly, I've started, I think probably last year, I've started doing that. Yeah. One of the things that I've realized is that it's really easy right now to get your work out there into the world. And like I've submitted my poems for it's a it's a british online magazine yeah. they basically publish poems so i've submitted that yeah. and one of the things that we have done we actually shot a short film of which we've entered competitions yeah. so we're still awaiting for that maybe our day yeah. so i've realized that one of the things that has driven the world for probably the past 20 years is usually digital platforms and yeah. people are making money off of it and in Botswana is quite relatively new if you are being honest, we are not yet there yeah. and most people don't understand how to go about it but uh, the economy has changed and has, is dependent on digital media yeah. like we say the fourth uh, some industrial, in the, in, revolution. industrial revolution yeah. so that's basically it, I'm starting so I'll probably get there uh, okay, if, in Botswana uh, most if not all of them uh, let me use the word most, let me not just say that. Like, people don't understand uh, creativity, like creative arts. And it's not prominent in mobile zone. The only thing that only say creative art is call them a musician, and that's about it. And we have the, a whole other side of creatives that are not being utilized, like the way Americans have done, the way South Africa has done, the way even Nigeria has done. And I understand that Nigeria is like the third, if not the second. Uh, Kuni Melo Red Drive, you are getting a creative industry. Basically, the film, sound and everything like that, but it's making a whole lot of money. It's a billion 
multi-billion industry so why why um, decided to do it it's basically to get people to get to get my work out out there uh, to get people to read and to go because if i just write and then keep it for myself how am i going to grow without getting criticism without getting inspiration without getting that feedback of your work because one thing about creative is that you each and every day you learn you never stop learning you never stop growing so um, I started doing that because I want people to know know how to open. Even somebody from Botswana can do it. Okay, um, my name is Kiano Bokabotelo. My stage name is MCK. I'm a professional MC. I host events. I specialize in karaoke events and print events only. So, well, I think because I started on, on stage yeah. and I realized that I'm good at communication, uh, of recent I registered a company. It's called the Publicity Hub. And one important element that we do and offer as a service is social media marketing and public speaking and training, which we can actually record it into mini videos and then actually share with the people who are our clients. So besides being an MC, we've actually I've actually diversified into something that is way too professional, so that I can actually train people into being good communicators. Hi, my name is Belvia Masahongorina. I'm a student at Buang studying science and technology. I'm a model. I'm also a henna artist. And yeah, that's basically it. Well, it started in 2018 when I had a few friends, Hindi friends and Muslim friends. So that's when we decided to like start a business out of henna. And eventually we ventured out and separated, but we are still doing it individually. Modeling, I wow, I'm not sure when it started, but I think yeah, somewhere um, 2018, 2019. Uh, I don't, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure, but it just somehow hit me because a lot of people were like, you know what, you should try out this because of your skin color. You should try it out because you have like good qualities. I mean being a commercial model or an editorial model because we see I can't really fit for the runway but yeah those ones I can do yeah having that kind of masculine body that's where it all started also it's because somehow I wanted to start that business of being a fitness trainer Yo, hey, what's good? It's your boy Tabs, Gabs, Lemon Squeeze, Lemonade, Big Juice, Big Fruit, Big Lemon. I'm a rapper, producer, engineer. I sell Durags. I sell CDs. I'm also handsome. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's such a cool thing to say. I'm gonna like do that when I get home. Passion economy. But either way, um, uh, firstly, of course, at the time I wasn't very aware of what I'm about to say, but at least now I can firmly say that. The, at least the art of making money is solely based around uh, providing product benefits and communicating value. So essentially, if you just take those two things, you can essentially sell anything as long as someone has perceived benefits of whatever you're selling and you can tell them, communicate, that this is valuable and people are always willing to pay for anything they deem valuable even if it's not justified <laughs> so understanding that i have talents and i have my own perception of what value is in my talents it, it was it was very quick to see that i can have a substantial income from the value i provide you know because i'm always creating value even if people don't see it as valuable you know i can tell you right now if i charge 100k for a feature niggas will be like that's crazy but if i could communicate in a way that you can see that it's valuable and it's worth 100k people will be willing to pay for it at the same time when i started making music there were so many examples of people who were already making money off of the same thing that i was doing and in that sense it doesn't make sense to not be doing to not be making money doing the exact same thing so then it was up to me to figure out okay apart from just creating the product benefits you know which is good music then i should also figure out what it is that they're doing to communicate value and how they're executing it in a way that it allows for people to give them money in return so early on it was just easy to see that okay this thing that i'm passionate about it's valuable 
people are willing to pay for this I need to figure out how to get them to pay for it and that's where the journey began basically uh, my name is Sito Utisizwe and I'm the owner of Pula Custom Studio and what we do at Pula Custom Studio is customize regular goods such as shoes and denim jackets into anything you want uh, basically yeah um i i recognized it at the age of 15 through the internet uh i had i used to watch a lot of youtube this actually started uh, like what i what i do is art you know so when i saw a lot of youtubers making money through what i do i was like i can just do this too so i started getting uh my friends shoes people my classmates shoes and then and then charging them a small fee to do that and then it all started from there mm. all right okay my name is roxy um i'm a singer songwriter rapper yeah but that's like my stage name my name is actually like mm. so yeah um i would say when i met like my producer he's the one who told me about those things like um the fact that we could use the, those digital streaming platforms to make money so he's the one who told me about that and i was like yeah that sounds like a good idea because obviously like in reality like kind in life like you don't really get gigs especially with like corona these days you don't get much yeah. People don't pay. Sometimes you do get a gig and then you don't pay. So it's like, yeah, it's that side of it. Uh, now I would say I haven't worked with a lot of people yet, uh, but like the few that I've worked with, I believe it's important because like I realize what if I have a song out or like some content out, somebody who like they have their own fans then I have my own fans or people that follow us, then that brings more people into our content and then we can be able to be discovered by different people. So that's a benefit. I have collabed with international artists, but I haven't collabed with any bots artists. Yeah, but hopefully one of these days, because I talked to a couple and we talked about I when I get my equipment back, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, I believe that in bots, uh, you are aware of people, but it's not easy to come into contact with them. Because I know a lot of digital artists, but it's not easy for me to be able to go to inbox them because maybe they don't reply or are not familiar like that. So collaborating in a digital world world is not as easy as I believe in other worlds of uh, creativity. It's it's very ish. I have two answers that are contradictory but it's not important but it's also incredibly important. Like I'm in the space where I believe that everything is up to my control and you know um, like it's just on me. Like I can make it as an individual so I bear complete responsibility over my success and my music career and I would put that on anyone else so I'd say like you don't need collaboration to get to where you end because I mean all it takes is I mean well that's like very theoretical but let me get to like the other point like it's very funny because unfortunately we need like a lot of people in like in the path to success because i remember i was listening to an audiobook i forgot i forgot the, uh, the author's name but something snipes and the book is how to make it in the music business and he was talking about how to make a hit and then he was like yo um there are no coincidences like you look at a hit and then you know there are these fallacies of oh he just blew up because he's talented but he's like no actually when you look at a hit it's a collaborative process between a minimum of at least 50 people and that's in regards to radio people that's in regards to management that's in regards to publishing labels distribution it takes at least minimum 50 people even if the artist is unaware so if your song blows up it's not a coincidence there was a huge collaboration i mean even i can even argue that like just people listening to my music and sharing it 
that's instant collaboration but the less important collaboration is like collaboration with other artists in terms of success I mean, if you want to make good music like collaboration can bring that you know when i started working with flex not that he was like physically like teaching me and he was hands on but just working with him like it changed so much in terms of my production we weren't even making beats but i saw him make a beat and i saw him mix my album and that like that changed so much about how i make beats now and uh, you know every time i work with him i'm learning something new so in terms of making music and the art collaboration not that you need it but it can bring your music to a whole nother level however it's not like you can do it as well like it's not a it's, just, it's not necessarily like a need 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 but the collaboration in terms of the administration of your records moving that's that's like crucial oh yeah yeah um for starters we all need each other regardless of uh, whatever that we do as an MC I need an artist regardless of whether it's they are into art as in painting or music whatever kind of art they're into so ever since I've started working as an MC I've realized the importance of people in my life even right now I've actually I'm actually working with two young men who are into different arts I mean different angles of art so right now, I can say I'm an MC, yes, but I need that symbiotic relationship to survive right now. More especially that the economy is, just, it is right now. It is quite important, trust me, because um, for us to be able to sometimes get sponsors and for us to be known, you have to be relating to any other person who is in the same place as you are and also to team build each other and to work together and to also be able to receive critic. Because uh, honestly, though poetry is about emotion, sometimes you need to be aware of what you're seeing to go out there and be able to make it work and stand out. So if you work with other poets and other people who are in the same industry as you are, then you're able to get it done and move it. Actually, it's, it's very important. Yeah. I'd say collaborations are, yeah. are something that that's needed, especially for 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 the industry in Botswana. Yeah. Like we're, we're such a small small group that it wouldn't really make sense for you to do things on your own. Yeah. For us to go, if you wanna go quicker and and greater, yeah. you just have to collaborate with people. Yeah. So I, yeah, I do collaborate. With people. Uh, and honestly, some if if you're someone who who, who does something that's in line with what I do, yeah. then I find it like that. It, make, it just makes sense for me to collaborate with you. So if, so if let's say someone is a t-shirt uh, designer and then they come up to me, they want to do something, we sit over it and then talk over what we're going to do together. And then, and then, yeah. I've worked with Bayo uh, Korata from Korata in Aube and uh, who else? Winston Khaled as, as well. Um, a bunch of others, honestly. I, I can't keep Concerning henna, being a, as a henna artist, no. I don't really work with other people. I just do it alone. And then modeling, yes. I do with, work with other people. Like I have collaborations with other models. And yeah, I've done with other a creative industry would have to be the one that has a lot of passion, a lot of culture, I guess. Um, yeah, a lot of creativity and a lot of people who follow their dreams. Yeah. Mm. Yes, a lot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that question is one of the creative industry basically. How? Uh, what can I say? Uh, it's about. It, it's a very subjective industry. It entails a lot of things. It maintains your musicians, your art, your graphic designers, it's a whole lot of industry. 
Hello, I think uh, as much as it would be about to buy they think outside of the box, they are very creative, if I might use that word again. Um, it also has the opportunity to actually create thousands and millions of jobs. I mean, let's take a typical example. We have a film company. So you have you have your producers and everything. You're probably going to need a, a marketing person for that film. You're probably going to need an accountant. You're probably not going to you're going to need an IT person for your computers. You see how it best a better other professions yes it, 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 like, it entails almost everybody so it has uh, the opportunity to do that and i think we haven't been utilizing that in the time of life yeah, so creative industry is a very broad industry it entails a lot of things it entails of, it's, it's a passion economy if you might say if i might borrow from you to me creative creative industry is being able to see out something and putting action to it. Like, uh, since my expertise is in engineering, if you develop something and being able to explain it to somebody to understand how to use it, that's you being creative. And if uh, we, are, we poets are in the, in the stage performing a certain story and seeing it out to the audience, it's also being creative. And having the, the, the audience understand what we said and sharing it out there. It shows that you were creative enough um, to have people understand and play the little visions in their minds of what you're trying to say, because they as well can be able to relate to that. Yeah, yeah, I believe we do. I believe we do. There are, there are a lot of practices I've met over the years across universities. Uh, I've met Sarin Malaika. I've met. Uh, I don't know her stage name, Kamahalo Kamahalo. I've met uh, the, the other poetess who's at uh, Beast right now, uh, Yolanda, I think, yeah. So it's it's just that we uh, we don't really, out, I wouldn't say it this way, but Botswana really don't really relate much to poems. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't really groomed into my mental health that much to a point that any Botswana can just walk into a session and sit and say, let me agree to this. The youth are the ones who are able to just go and say, let me support this person and listen to this person, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have like the most awesome answer to that, but I believe it's all about being artistic, mm. tapping into some kind of a unique gift that you can actually deliver to people mm. so that they can be enticed or sometimes buy it. And I feel the creative industry is just a platform where people use their abilities, different abilities to just fill a gap, whether it's emotional or it's financial for themselves. It's, it's that, the ability to use talent to make it. The creative industry, yeah, we, do. we do and we have loads and loads of artistic people or people who are so creative, regardless of whether it's fashion or it's music, whatever that, is, whatever that they do that is so talented, that shows talent. I think there's plenty and loads of people who are so creative. Uh, for me, a creative industry, I believe it should be a collective of people that are expressing their talents or arts. And if we talk about it economically, it should be paying off for those people. So I believe expression plus paying off. I believe we have expression. There's every other day there's an artist releasing a song, every other day there's an artist posting art, um, but not that many are getting paid for it as much as well as they should be compared to like other economies, but there's factors as to why. So uh, One of the factors is I believe our population. It's not easy for us to create numbers for our work or fund artists as much as they should be compared to like South Africa where if Nasty C releases a song if there's 55 million people obviously it's gonna get like a million plays but for us if I release a song I might get like a thousand plays because population also one last thing is how we treat what we do like you'd find that we love international stuff more than our own you know we don't really give like i know maybe you do poetry right yeah. but then i talk about like shakespeare and i won't give you your props because yeah. i'm familiar with them so i think that's another thing as well. uh, i believe the creative industry honestly is like just us as like artists we make it we make it what it is and it just not just artists but like music artists but like um Basically, anybody that do, does, does any type of art, the drawing, the music, and acting, stuff like that, that's what I mean to what I believe it is. I would say, not entirely, I don't believe so. I feel like there's like 
artists like for me i believe it's when we're all together mm. but it's like there's there is what makes the creative industry but it's not we're not together so it doesn't really make it a creative industry it's just creative yeah that's a big question right because now the way i see things is i just see things as uh business and i've grown to to see things as a business and just like having a regular job so a create like creative industry to me i don't know bro. Yeah. i don't know i just it's either you can like if you have a if you have a talent you can just literally turn that into a business because what's the point of like that that's a business you know yeah. but yeah bro like i just see things as, as, as a business bro honestly like a creative industry should be that's how people should view it as like so the reason why i'm saying this is because i see a lot of people these days like uh complaining to to the government about about hormone about like not getting benefits and all that but like if you view your your talent as uh, a business then you should know that that's something that it's, that's entirely up to you you know you're up you're the one who's responsible for researching on ways to market yourself on ways to do all that stuff so really treat it i just treat things as, as yeah definitely it's there. wow that's crazy man a creative industry i feel like i'm just like like you know 12 more questions man. <laughs> a creative industry i guess like um a collective of individuals who have a certain value proposition based on the creative work that they tap into that they're skillful in that they're passionate in which they actively try to turn it to a profitable i'd say business but you know people don't like thinking of the art as a business but like something profitable i guess as an industry but i'm sure like there's so many nitty gritties i can but like yeah i guess like that would be a, a good way to sum it up yeah for sure no doubt easy easy uh i mean of course it's like the internet you know um that it's it's progress in terms of creating so many media outlets media platforms also how it's changing certain ways for the convenience of consumers like how you know instead of cds now we have streaming online streaming which is like the lost leader now it's like we make less money off of cds but the convenience of people listening it's in the it's in their favor essentially and they can consume more or we make less money but you know just the the integration of new technology the way it's developing it's it it really helps with pushing the art in terms of its purpose which is being consumed i mean of course i believe i make music for myself because it's based off of what i feel it's based off of who i am it, but you know eventually it's it's not only consumed by me i'm i'm sure a painter when he paints he he does he just he, he doesn't just want it to be seen by himself you know a singer doesn't just want to sing in the bathroom you know what i mean um like it really helps in that aspect in taking it further to people in terms of making money it's it's kind of an argument you know it's like uh is an increased level in consumption gonna lead to more money you know should i just limit my cds i mean limit my music cds to make more money but less people consume you know it's like as technology progresses i've seen that yeah it really helps consumption and that is like it essentially can take it to another level because niggas couldn't blow up on the internet in 1956 because there was no internet i don't know when the internet was invented don't add me <laughs> yeah. like n that couldn't happen at all you know you couldn't just blow up like that so it's like it essentially helps also 
with technology, you know, say in terms of collecting royalties, it can really help uh, also like handling copyrights. You know, it could really help uh, trying to uh, get the value that is being uh, created in terms of like if uh, just a wild idea, say someone is playing music at this monument for the purpose of attracting people you know you could put like a audio device to record every time it's played so that you know royalties are uh, sufficiently allocated you know for people who aren't aware performance royalties include the, ro the, the the music that's played at events or certain places for you know uh, profitable use so then artists always have to be compensated for that and you know when music is being played in chopies we get wrecked but then if you had like an audio device always recording you know exactly which songs need to be allocated for even though i'm sure people are keeping up yeah. so yeah it'll be like those like little things which could be done by technology rather than people you know because like i said it's a collaborative process so you could cut down that collaboration with technology too you know like like hey, i'm talking too much about this but like say like i said cds and you couldn't just blow up but you know back in the day uh, like you really couldn't make or at least have a sufficient career as an artist without a record label because you as an individual you don't have assuming you're not rich you don't have the resources you don't have the connections you don't have the the, the communication capacity or ability to make that collaborative process you know you'd have to make a ton of CDs you'd have to go to a distributor you'd have to get in touch with the radios but you can do that online now you know and that cuts down how many people you have to talk to and the cost of doing that so it's like it's an argument man. i don't know yeah for sure give us money though right? of course free money like, we can, uh, easy dog. like it's just it's, it's just more about what we do with the funding you know niggas have money all the time they buy air force ones they buy chicken licking you know <laughs> like, like like the crowdfunding Funding in general is a thing, cool, it can help out, but niggas have to use the money wisely. Like even with even with charities, like you can't just give your money to any charity. You have to know like these niggas are legit, you know. Yeah. It can help, but yeah. we have to help ourselves too. Um, what can happen is if only the, the, the industry we can be able to be given the equipment, say the cameras, say the stage to be able to work on that and be able to being sponsored to have uh, events or sessions where poetesses and poets can uh, collaborate and work together. I believe uh, technology would be wise because then we could be able to record, probably share in YouTube, share in our social media platforms without stressing. Uh, the first question would be, are we going to like a trade in the Well, not. Said, well, not. Um, so, for us to be able to understand that crowdfunding um, platforms is for us to be financially treated first. And uh, also, I think uh, that's when we'll be able to be aware that we can actually fund ourselves, go together and fund ourselves. But other than that, and also due to unemployment, can we really make it work? Do we trust each other to make it work? The reason why I'm talking about financial literacy right now is if we're talking about people doing crowdfunding in order to make something work, like creating industry, sponsoring each other and all that, it would need people to work together. It would need us to be, uh, to entrust ourselves within the budget. It would also need us to understand what a we're not only working for now, because kind of when it comes to pushing up and saving up money, it means you have, you have to understand that in the end is what I want, right? So if, yeah, we come with the same mindset to, towards the, the crowdfunding area, then we can make it work, yes. As you're saying already, our parents were able to make it work, right? But now, the idea is they were making it work because they knew they wanted us to Yes, we do know that if we make it work as well, we want to see our our creatives working on that as well, making it big, right? If we can put it that way, and if also we can be financially we need because we need to be able to more like make it an investment or something.
right? Bone do ni kula. Probably all the months go to us either. The money is gone. As we need to make it a process. As I say, creatives has to be a process. From speaking at all to idea and our product. Um, I believe that technology, for me personally, yeah. when I'm creating, yeah. it makes it easier for me to be able to make um, large quantities of work compared to if I'm doing it traditionally. Like you'd find that if maybe you're painting, eh, you would take maybe six hours to like fill a page, but then with the PC, you just click a button and it fills in and then you just click. So it's, it makes it more efficient and quicker. Yeah. And in terms of like how I can get my stuff out, Instagram is easier than maybe going to like a, a museum because not everybody comes to a museum but like people are always online so I believe technology helps in that. I believe crowdfunding can work, yes, I, I believe so, how I don't know but I believe that there's people that might be able to make it work for themselves. One thing that we don't we don't realize in, as, as, as young artists or just people in the creative industry is the power of technology. In other countries, let's take America, people actually pay for subscribing to, to blogs. When the audience subscribes to the blog, obviously the artist or the creative person is going to benefit, including the person who's the media platform in that market. So that's how we can actually merge our art, our creative abilities with today's technology. I think it, it actually can be more beneficial for almost every creative person in Botswana. If we could do that, we, we just venture into crowdfunding to start our own events and host our whatever that we want to host and be able to actually feed from that and eat from that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an important thing to do. But the question is, is everyone going to be fully committed as the person who's carrying the patient? Yeah. That's the question. Uh, I mean, what I do is basically driven by technology, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, for example, I, I'm a person who's very, I want to become a storyteller. Yeah. I'm already a storyteller, let me just say that. So, uh, and for, for you to tell a story nowadays, especially if you are you need equipment a lot of the high quali caliber, let me say, uh, those equipment that can use green screen, I mean, to, to simulate yeah. certain environments and everything. You see how technology, like a very advanced technology, and you probably need for makeup or all good things, let's say, a lot of probably, while it's not even true. So uh, uh, what I, technology is basically in the film industry, I'm to go that side. So I need to be able to be technologically, I mean, know something about it. Yeah. I think one of the things that we need to not really shy away from, but to move away from it, but is to depend on the government to almost do everything. Yeah. I mean, they will tell you they don't have money. So if we are to do that, they already said if funds are for ourselves and open a space where my creatives will be there to go work. It sort of it, it boosts everything. You can work to get your work done rather than just waiting for a higher power to come and give you money because more times than not, they are not going to be able to be doing that because in Botswana, all it's relatively new, honestly. So if somebody goes like, okay, I want to shoot a film, let me go up my good good company. They will go like, yeah. really? So it's not really there so if you want to do art for ourselves if you want to shoot a movie and then you start raising funds for that and because we know the impact that it can bring we better understand the revenues that it can bring forth and it's, we know the risk that entails and everything so it really really really, really take out take everything a step further uh, many people don't they know about it but they don't actually understand it but it's all about creative industry the fourth i mean everybody needs to know something got technology yeah. if we're being honest and look at do you know that i don't know how many times you watch television uh, it's rare yeah. but somehow you are with the you watch a, a movie in your yeah. phone yeah. you watch tiktok we're making millions out of tiktok when you started it was just it looks like a silly thing but now people are making money off for making videos so you know what I have, that's how it is so the fourth industrial revolution is tied to, to the creative industry. So if you can understand that as Batsana and the higher powers that we are under, so you can, there's a lot to be done. I feel like that's a very good thing because like we already see like in different countries like how people make money off of like YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. So I feel like if that could like happen then it would really be a good thing because Kinda like I said, like in bots, it's so hard for us to get 
money from like an actual gig where you go there like a lot of people promise you then the next thing they don't pay you so i feel like like that since you can't do it without paying then it's so much easier because people have to literally pay, have to pay to view the item so yeah. it will be much more beneficial and you, you know what your numbers do yeah. i believe like like that's the probably the only way that can make things happen because I like individuality. Ah, it doesn't really help. Like if you're trying to do stuff by yourself, and like I believe our nation is like a nation where we believe in dependence. Like to that, you know? <laughs> like you can help each other basically. If you don't help each other, then you can't move forward. Yeah. So I believe if the crowdfunding thing can happen, it can really, really take like the industry and our work to a different level. Always come for improvement. Just like I said, like when I treat things as a business, like there's something called scaling in in a business. You know, you always go up high, higher and higher. So yeah, there's always room for 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 like technology. You can have like, for example, you can just have internet and then use that to push yourself on social media and stuff like that. And in terms of my business, I use the internet. I can have. Uh, instead of using paint brushes, I can use uh, air guns. You know, just a lot of things. I can use printers. A lot of things, but so you can. Technology is really important in, uh, in, in like in this day and age. Yeah, yeah you don't really need to like reinvent the wheel or something. Just you know, do what you gotta do to get money. Yeah, yeah, that can work. Because like at the end of the day, every business needs a. Uh, it needs startup, you get what I'm saying? So, obviously, yeah, you can start something without money, but like, it's gonna be harder to run in the long run. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you can do whatever you want. You can crowdfund, you can get a loan, ask money from your parents, you know, get a job, and yeah. For now, looking at all the things that we use, all the social media platforms, I think. All we have to do is to just make it or turn it into like an international level. I think it has a lot of, um, it has to do with trust, a lot of trust. I mean, a lot of people do it, but not really that much because they don't really trust other people as well. So in terms of it, I think it's best. If that like people, you, I mean, if you do it within the circle that you trust people, but I also think it has to do with the way you, the name maybe, mm. how they name everything. You know, there's Motel, there's Bad Suzu, there's crowdfunding. All those have to do with the same things, right? Mm. But then different names. So I think that's what people get attracted to and the way they do it. I mean, it might be in a form of triangle or a chain or sort of like a letter, anything. Trying something new in the modeling uh, in industry and doing something different for Hannah. Yeah, maybe expanding it. Well, I have collaborated with other people, but then maybe getting it to a different stage, a bigger level, so going international. Okay, yes. my Instagram account would be Belvia, um, Belvia's ads, and then my Facebook one would be Belvia's ad as well. My number would be seven five seven three seven two seven zero. Yeah, I dropped the single on like the 30th of October last year, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I believe right now what I'm trying to do is to get the songs from the EP out. I'm trying to work that with my producer. I'm trying to like also record other songs, put out music when I can, when I can, you know. Um, at Roxy1098 on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook as Rajasan Lissetedi. That's why I post most of my videos. I have a page, Roxy BW, but I don't really post there. But I believe I'll be doing that this year. And uh, yeah, like for bookings, they can just check my email. Like, yeah. like um, 
Rudisang LW at gmail.com. Uh, right now I've been laying low key due to the virus and all uh, and other things, but like in the future, in the near future, this this time I'm gonna be pushing out a lot of content and a lot of products so i can't really say right now but like you guys have to keep in touch uh, you guys have to be tapped in into the pages to see what's going on mm, you can catch me at Bula custom studio on all social media platforms it's the same throughout on facebook on ig and that's on i don't think also contact me or on 766 uh what's next for me when stars align, probably by October, so I'll be studying my masters in screenwriting, basically screenwriting and directing in the UK. Because that I believe that I can learn a lot. Because I want to come back to Bosan and tell our stories. Because uh, there's a lot to tell. I don't know. Should I, should I, should I give a hint? Yeah, yeah. But, no, no. But people, <laughs> you, um, they'll have the ideas same as mine. But yeah. they won't execute it the way I, I want to execute it myself. So like. One of the things that I was like, when I finished school and coming back, the first film that probably right is about a woman chief. I uh, forgot her name. She was she she was one I don't about Obama. You know that she fought wars. Yeah, she fought wars way back in mm. was on She like fought wars and she won. So you see, we don't know that. That's the first story I wanna tell. Let me just stop there. But I wanna tell her person, Sahamit. Mm. I've started actually doing research on that, so that's basically what's next. And I'll probably be the first Botswana, Botswana to have a film and not fix. Instagram is Hanokolaka, and then my number is 723 Even my email is Hanokolaka321 at gmail.com. Uh, for me, it was getting equipment, digital art wise. Music, I paused, I only like, make songs every once in a while, but it was getting equipment, and then. Hopefully, starting to anime. You know, that's the that's the main goal for me. I want to do digital art and then end up as an anime. Uh, my art, you can find it at at Elisha Machavo dot art, and then my music is SoundCloud uh, at Elisha Machavo. Just that's it. Just the two. Right now, like I said, um, I've registered my own company. It's called the Publicity Hub. It will be dealing with brand management, communications marketing and public relations so right now the publicity hub is looking for people that they can work with to actually help them maintain their image not to taint the image and destroy it i have a page for my my professional mc duties <laughs> uh, it's, it's called erin um, that's my facebook handle on instagram it's still erin <laughs> and my personal account for facebook it's galabaka kibo Hello. Um, my numbers, uh, my masculine number is 7671-0093, my orange number is 74800-336. My email is galabohabotelo95 at yahoo.com. The Publicity Hub, we have a social media page, our Facebook page actually is, is Publicity Hub. So every information that you need to know about us, our contact information is just there. Uh, a lot of things, you know, being one of the biggest artists in the world, uh, starting an artist management company slash record label i'm still on the fence because record labels are dying so it's probably not the best idea but having an entity which i've technically started in my heart which is don't sleep on this you know uh, just as an artist myself who didn't have the courage to start making music yet having so much potential and talent it's, it just shows that there is a need for someone else to be there who can, who has great business philosophy and life philosophy, who can help another artist take their career to where it should be and not be discouraged with the idea, which, which it is an idea that I can't be successful due to anything apart from myself. Because it's not like I want to babysit artists. I just want the artistry. Well, well, to be more specific, I just don't want them to feel the same pain I felt. Knowing you have potential and talent, but feeling as if you can't express this potential 
due to your own limiting beliefs and you know imagine like you know i mean i have songs with people are like yo this shit changed my perspective or changed my life you know technically every time i make a song it changes our lives technically maybe it's not huge but it does and imagine like yeah you know imagine like all the value that could have been created from the artist you know who i don't know who Paco and Maun you know like who knows who that nigga could have been but because of his own limiting beliefs which are justifiable i mean you know you talk to niggas they'll give you a million reasons why they can't make it you know but like the the biggest reason you can make it is because you're talented and you're you you know that's the, that trumps everything because it's in your control you have the power and i need people to see that and i need to or at least for me it will help me out cuz i'll be pushing the industry and doing what i think is right trying to help people not experience that pain and have that belief and be like you i can do this i'm talented i am the shit you know at the same time to do that and to prove it out to be one of the biggest artists in the world yeah. you know cuz i say i'm the best in the country but i'm really like i i hate it now because people just they agree to it cuz it's easy to agree to <laughs> like it's just so easy to agree to but watch how niggas react to them like ah oh, raging shit like niggas niggas get on me bro like <laughs> like if i'm like ah oh, bro i could take a risk dog niggas are like now nah, bro what are you saying bro you know like so that's another thing and uh yeah that's the next one uh tabs on everything uh tabs on everything I don't know. <laughs> yeah, t- yeah, tell me everything. Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, Twitter. Like, yeah, you'll search tells you'll get me, bro. <laughs> For sure. Um, if you're an artist listening to this, believe in yourself. It's really in your control. Like, it's crazy. People don't know how strong they are. Um, people also don't know the potential like it's so crazy how like the examples in real life like look at people like Stephen Curry like in 2016 he was regarded as the greatest shooter in history and then he improved you know like you know to get to NBA level you have to be like insanely talented like as a nigga who plays basketball like it's ridiculous how talented you are like seeing someone who you've played with and then imagining that someone in high school is probably 10 times better and then imagining someone in college in american college is probably 10 times better than that then imagining that niggas don't even make it to the nba and even when they get to the nba niggas improve they get even better like we really don't understand how much potential we have and we also don't know how strong we are you know like sometimes we feel like we're incapable of doing something but it really just takes a level of adversity to figure out who you are and that's the biggest and probably the most significant way to figure out who you are is just by facing your fears and facing what you find difficult in your life you know that's that's where you find yourself it's like in joker or oh, joker what am i saying in dark night like it's, i don't know people i don't think niggas really rate that scene but there's a scene where joker is in like a uh, prison cell after he killed like a bunch of police officers and joker and all this shit right so he's in a cell with another officer and he's like taunting him trying to get the officer to react emotionally and he's like yo bro like You know, I killed your friends. I've seen them die and I've seen them die at gunpoint. You want to know who is the coward? Like because in adversity, not saying nigga should die. <laughs> in the midst of the highest level of adversity, you find out who you really are. You know, like you just have to keep facing those challenges to know who you are. Uh honestly, it's like just uh If you want to start making money off of your talents you need to like research a lot on what you're going to do so go learn about business learn about uh 
everything that goes on in more business and honestly the internet's your friend your best friend and like literally youtube you can learn anything off of that and yeah that's it like there are those kids who you know very well like me um i used to excel so very much in composition but yes. passion I mean, composition became very easy like literature came very easy so we need to and overhaul it was saying to know it's like matters because we need to know just a tiny bit but overhaul of the syllabus and everything and those who are criticized they keep doing what you guys are doing and never settle for anything less than what you are yeah people should be doing their own they should show up their talents and try to achieve their dreams and goals I don't know if I should call this an advice or a recommendation that the whole creative body, we, we need to, to, to unite and we need to be there for each other because people are actually struggling right now. Um, artists, we especially, performers, fashion designers, there are no shows and stuff. So these are times where, like you're talking about crowdfunding, these are, this is a time where we can actually link all of us so that we discuss a way forward out of this mayhem that we are going through. So I think it's it's a cry for all artists and everybody who's just creative in their own space to just venture or just communicate so that they can link up with everybody who has a scale or something so that we can link up and just discuss a way forward. We need like a social platform where we can just discuss a way forward without fighting anybody, without fighting the government, without fighting any other artists so that we can just be there and think like people want to be productive regardless of the situation. Yeah, I would just say people should follow me, support each other, not just me, support the people. Like if somebody puts up a link and I'm trying to get listened to, like if, some, if somebody is asking for support, support them. It doesn't really cost much to do that. If someone to like that, you would follow them, you know. I believe that music and art and creativity film all aspects of creativity and what should be taken more I don't know if I should say seriously but they should be given a chance yeah. you know if people are doing stuff like I've heard Rox say if people are doing stuff we should give them a chance to be able to portray what they do because you never know they might be the next big thing but we're not giving them the cap. So I really want Rosanna to be to remember who we are you know even beyond this as this um, identity of Mozana to really tap into ourselves um, as as the royalty that we are, friends, you know? Because I also don't want the story of um, my art career to be central, to be uh, to be centralized around what you call this thing, colonization. That's not what I'm here for. I'm really here to heal first myself, and then hopefully others through my arting. Thank you.